Howdy y'all. Welcome back to my channel. My name's Aaron Cavley, and we are going to continue the exciting further adventures of Jinx, aka sometime named Hit and Run, the Cyberpunk using Neon City Overdrive rules. As we left off, he had just escaped Neo Flamel and his scavenger crew and got this package for Slab, the block boss for the uh, Cardinal Vultures. And after quite a, uh, quite a struggle out there in the storm, outside of the walls, he managed to get the goods and escape and get back into the city walls through this secret uh, maintenance tunnel that somehow Slab and the Cardinal Vultures have access to. Unfortunately, as he drives out of one storm, he finds himself in the middle of another. And the there, there's a, a blockade of Razor Girl cars and Razor Girl thugs kind of waiting for him. And that's where we leave off. So as he comes in, he uh, he deactivates he deactivates the uh, the computer rendering so he can get a better look at, at what he's what he's seeing, and he, he's just gonna go. He, he's just gonna go because he he has he has nothing. He has no guns. He has nothing. He knows that if he gets caught now, that he's fucked. And so he screams and just guns it. It's not like a speedster like he's used to, but it is a tough vehicle. It's taken some damage from being outside, but it's tough. He's going to use he's going to use those all-terrain vehicles or all-terrain uh, vehicle wheels to try to f force his way past. Not like not try to ram through uh, precisely, but he's going to. He's got a high clearance. They have kind of speedy sports cars. He's going to try to find a place where he can uh, maybe get his car up off of the ground a little bit and either wedge his way between or maybe go over. And he, he's, he's really not... Uh, uh, he's really not sure. He's not really thinking. He's, he's kind of... He's not panicking, but he's reckless. So... In this case, he, his first thing, he, he's just going to get try, try to get by the blockade. Now, they are the Razor Girl thugs. There's, there's about five of them. They are ready for him. They knew he was coming, probably had some kind of contact with New Flamel. Or maybe that guy who ran, uh, who, was, who was chased away, maybe he told them something. Either way... The Razor Girls know he's there, and obviously because they're <laughs> because they're waiting for him, and he is going to try to he's going to try to press on by. So I am going to give him his. I'm going to give him four die. I think you could make an argument that the toughness and the all-terrain wheels could add, but each add a die to his die pool, but. The all-terrain vehicles, will, uh, wheels will help, but they're really we're kind of back in the city now. So I don't know that they would get the full. And since he's not trying to burst through, I don't know that toughness would fully help. So I'm just going to give the one uh, for four dice, and I'm going to give I'm going to give one die for j just the the difficulty of it. They are surprised. Um, but they weren't necessarily, they weren't trying to set up necessarily like a professional blockade, but they were blocking the way. So in this case, I think I'm going to, I'm going to invoke his flaw of recklessness. He's not, he could possibly try to talk his way out or, uh, maybe it would be <laughs> smarter for him just to surrender. But he's being reckless, so he's not he's not thinking about what he's doing at all. And so I'm going to 
I'm going to refresh his stunt pool because he's, his recklessness is, is affecting him. And I'm going to add a danger die for his recklessness because he's just punching through. He's not even thinking about what he's doing. He's not even really looking for the best route. He's just going as fast as he can, like his ass is on fire, which it might be here in a minute. So I'm going to give him two danger dice. Okay, so two successes. Um, five is the highest. So not a perfect success, success, but he does manage to get by them. He gets up, uh, he, he squeezes through, he gets up on one of the cars and the as he's racing, uh, racing, charging through, all the Razor Girl uh, thugs jump to the side and he goes over uh, actually manages to get some some of it with his clearance. He gets up over one of them and kind of crunches crunches it as he goes. Uh, but now they are uh, for the for the effect of not getting exactly what he wanted. Uh, they're going as he pulls back. They find the girls. He he looks his back. He looks back and the rays of girls are setting up and they're starting to fire uh, their guns at him and he's trying to swerve back and forth. So what he's going to have to do is he's going to have to make a driving roll to keep from taking a, uh, from his vehicle getting damaged. See, in this case, I will allow... I, I think the toughness will help because it's, it's a strong vehicle. Fully, that's that's kind of what's going to be the thing, but it still works out to to four dice and two danger dice because well, there's a bunch of people shooting at him as he goes whipping out out of the speed. I hope that's my six. Oh no! All right, so we see that the danger die five cancels out, and all I've got left is twos. So he doesn't he doesn't make it, and the bullets uh, bang and ring, and they they ring inside the inside the the cab, and he gets he he gets another warning light about uh, uh, one subsystem or the other is damaged. He can't really pay attention to what what's going on right now because he's still trying to swerve and curve and get out of the way, but he does manage to get out. Out of the line of fire, uh, eventually, and tears off into the city. And he's hooking back. He hooks back up uh, onto his grid communicator. He's like, "Slab, slab, I'm back in the city. Those razor girls are chasing me. Can, can you give me some cover? Something." Let's see. Does she give him some cover? I think. Let's see, I think I'll use the uh I'll use the attitude. Hostile. Okay. She's not hostile towards him necessarily, but she's hostile to the idea of getting involved. And she's like, I can help direct I can help direct you. But I'm not bringing my people in. We're still need to stay out. Besides, this is your chance. This is your time to shine, Jinx. And then she cuts. Uh, but there is a... Uh, th there is a... Something of a helpful navigator path. And of course, he doesn't know that she is going to know the best way. He knows the streets very well. He's been all over the city. He's been driving. And... He's gonna start. He's he starts thinking about places that his ATV, which is slower than the vehicles that he can see that they were hopping into. There's two of them. Uh, the third vehicle, actually, he managed to uh, damage enough that they leave it there, and everyone piles into the two cars. Boy, he wishes he had a gun. He could, you know, maybe shoot back out. Uh, through you know, shoot through the windows or something, but they've got more guns anyway, so running is better. Unfortunately, his vehicle is is pretty beat up at this point, but eh, 
you, you, uh, you fight with what you got. So he goes tearing through the city. And uh, let's see. Hey, let's do a car chase. Do some car chase. Uh, so he goes tearing through the city. And he's thinking about rough places. Places that are not they're not quite so paved uh he 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 looks he goes down into some other parts of the tubes he doesn't even go up to the city he's not as familiar with the tubes but the ground there is rougher there's a lot more dirt and, and debris so he's going to he's going to tear on and he's going to try to get it he's going to try to get away and in the tubes also there's a lot of tunnels so he does have some chance to to maneuver but mostly he's hoping on the uh, the danger, you know, the, the dangerous terrain. Because they have fast cars, but they're really city cars. So, he's going to try to get to... He's going to try to lose, he's going to try to lose them. So, he's, he's, I'm going to make this another extended test. So, three, three tests. And see this first one I'm just gonna give zero danger dice because the other cars are still trying to catch up and they're on rough rough ground. Okay, excellent. So he gets a success, he gets a full uh, okay, so the the dice are still not matching with what's on the side over there. Anyway. Pay no attention to the rolling dice. I'm, I'm using the information in the chat area off to the right. So he does. He gets ahead. He finds a he finds a big, uh, nasty, mucky place, and he manages to get those tires uh, to go through it. And he whips around, and he finds another tube to go running out of. Now he doesn't want to stay in the tubes very long because it's a very confusing place, and he's afraid that he'll get cornered. So he does. He goes through as much as he can, and then he whips around into what looks like an exit uh, out of the tubes. And it is an exit, but there's a like a safety gate, and he just he just charges through it. It's not like a it's a it's a weak like a chain link thing to keep homeless people, and he can see where it's already been cut away anyway. So it's not really keeping anyone out, but. He drives through it and shatters the lock, and the doors fly open. And some homeless people that are living in tents uh, nearby they go running, running away. As he jumps, he takes air and uh, gets out. And the two cars that are following, they're not quite able uh, to to keep up through the muck. They do manage to pull through. I'm going to say that this one. This one ends up taking some damage as he as he's racing. Let's see. Well, I, I've given him three to exit. I may make it more of like a combat between the two where he's going through rough and we'll see whose car gets damaged the most, maybe. We'll see. Now he's back he's he's back on the main streets, and then he immediately tries to get off the main streets. He's going through these parking uh parking lots and these kind of rough fields and, and dilapidated yards in this area that he's in. Um, let's see, where is he? Where is he? What section? Six. Let's see, Neon City. That's one, two, three, four, five. That's a five. Okay, let's, let's re-roll that. Actually... Since it was a six, I'll let I'll I'll let the me the player choose, and I'll say uh, it's in the grinders because the grinders an industrial place. That's more that's a place more where he he suspects that he will get a chance to evade and use his vehicle's toughness and advantage. So we're gonna do he's he pops up and he screams off into the grinders. Okay, and he finds himself uh, in a going around a parking garage and. He swerves, and he ends up having to go into the parking garage, which is not what he wanted to do. So he's tearing up, going up this tower. Uh, now he's squealing and, and everything else. Uh, let's see if anything... Let's, let's roll an event. Ah, surveillance drone. Is it for us or for them? On a five or a six, we'll say it's a, a friendly for surveillance drone from the, uh, the, the 
Cardinal Vultures. On a three or four, it's actually working for the Razor Girls. And on a one or a two, it's a... I'd say it's an Authorities. It's for, it's for the Authorities. Okay, so that's for the Razor Girls. So this thing, it uh, he sees it come up flying from behind. Uh, this, in, in its... Um, right, he sees it through... You know, through the side, it actually is kind of hovering at the decks, kind of uh, going up outside of the building. As he goes up, it's going up, and the the Razor Girls are using this drone to track him to find out where he's going. So this is going to probably apply some kind of mechanical disadvantage. And he did not want to go into a parking garage anyway. This this is not what he wanted to do. So what he's going to do is he's going to, he's going to, he whips the car around and he's going to wait for them to come flying around one of the corners and he's going to gun it and he's going to try to, to run one of them off, you know, try, try to make them swerve away or maybe even ram into them, uh, knock them sideways, you know, damage the vehicle and then start <laughs> spinning back around. But that drone's there, that drone is there watching him. And he thinks about uh, asking uh, Slab for some help, but he's like, uh, he's, fuck it, fuck it. But he, he looks for a place, uh, like near a lobby on the on the floor, where the drone, who's been hovering around the outside of the building, can't see him right away. So he whips around, finds it, and then he's going to charge back out and try to ram or get one of those people out, out of the way. Hmm. Oh, whoops. Did I put the, fill that? I might have filled that in wrong. Alright, so I'm going to give him the four dice, three for his driving. And. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to spend. I'm going to spend that stunt point that I just, just got back. I'm going to spend it to apply both his driving and his daredevil because this is a pretty daredevil kind of thing right he's playing chicken with them he's using his reflexes and his fearlessness so i'm going to give him his three dice for his base his rev head his driving and then his offensive driving edge and then i'm going to give him daredevil fearlessness and reflexes to be able to swerve in and out and then finally i'm going to give him one for his vehicle's toughness. So that's a total of seven dice. That's pretty good. I hope to get a I hope to get a good roll out of that one. I will be very sad and despondent <laughs> if I don't. Um, but that and you know that's what the stunt points are for, to do these cool cyberpunky kind of things. Uh, let's see, it's close space. They kind of know where he's at, and they're moving fast. It's kind of tricky, so I'm gonna give two danger dice. Oh, God bless me. All right, so the six... Um, the six cancels out, unfortunately. Uh, but he does get... Well, he gets... He gets the, the two successes. That doesn't necessarily count for much, unless it's sixes. You only get boons if you've got, got the complete successes. But... He he did get the full he, he did get a success he got a five he comes around one the, the two cars come screaming around the corner and he he guns it right at the right the last second and he catches the car he sideswipes it and kicks it and then starts spiraling back down the parking garage. That guy's down to one, but the uh, the the wheels he gets hit and his wheels are they're not acting properly. So for a while, um, he he's going to lose his ATV any ATV bonuses. They they've gone back into normal mode. They won't do grip mode anymore from the impact. Oops, I did not I did that wrong. You should be down to one. 
so the, so the impact somehow damaged damaged the vehicles but he he does sideswipe and he forces that guy off and he spins into the side and uh, slides into a, a column not he's not out but it does wreck and now uh, jinx is is again spiraling down back out to the street and he can see the uh, you can see the drone now again, and it's following him back down, so they know where he's at. Let's see. I want to say that I'm going to count that as a success for his escape. So the two cars, so he's got two out of three now. The two cars, they, they spin out, and they spend some time trying to get back to where they can start chasing him down and he gets a he gets a pretty decent lead uh, because even though their cars are faster um you know they're all kind of they're all kind of Tokyo drifting all the way down and he busts back out the he he blows through the parking attendant the 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 auto park attendant arm just slams through it it goes flying off into the street some people scatter and he he goes screaming around the corner and takes off but they're they're right behind him okay Actually, let's see. So they, they drive off, and the next thing that he finds, as he finds himself as he's whipping around through the neighborhood trying to escape the grinders. Ah, food truck circus. And, th and that's basically just like a conglomeration of all these little uh, food trucks that gather. They congregate like during lunchtime, and so all the people from the local grinder, the factories, can come out and, and get their lunch. And he... He loves a good food truck, you know, who doesn't? But he takes his vehicle and he starts whipping through. He's he's honking. He wants people to get out of the way. And he's kind of, you know, sleepy looking, worn looking uh, factory workers turn to him as they see it. And he's he's revving. He's, he's revving through. And they, you know, they look and they're like, ah! And they they jump out of the way, and then the you know some um, worker on one of one of these trucks sticks his uh, sticks her head out the window, and she ah, and she pulls somebody out with her, and they jump out the other side, and people are people are scattering, food's getting dropped, and he flies through these vending trucks, and what he's going to try to do, he's going to try to use his toughness to kind of knock them around he doesn't want to like fully t-bone t-bone them but he's going to try to knock into them so that they'll kind of spin and tumble and hopefully not kill anybody as they're as they're spinning around but those people chasing him are likely going to kill him if they catch him so he's going to he's going to do that and the two since they're really they're more on normal roads now the other two the cars that are chasing them are are starting to catch up and he's starting to get nervous he, he's hoping that he's not going to come across and find another uh, blockade of these razor girl cars because that that bitch thing slab is not helping him all right so that's gonna i'm gonna give that four dice because uh, I'm going to allow the toughness. He doesn't have his art, uh, his ATV, but his toughness I think will allow him give him a bonus to try to to try to knock through. Um, but it, it is kind of tricky. There's a lot of people around. He's trying not to smash hurt people per se. I mean, he's not all that concerned, but you know, he's he doesn't want to gratuitously run people over, even though he, you know, he's run several people over now. But we'll give him one one danger die. Oh, okay. Zero successes. All right. So he he's driving along, and one truck instead of instead of abandoning one food truck instead of abandoning it, he jumps into the seat and he's like, "I'm going to keep my truck. Don't kill my truck." And he, you know, of course, he can't see this picture. This is kind of a cutaway. Uh, you know, the camera zooms in on this one food truck. 
it's mine, it's mine, no, no, and he tries to move it, and he thinks he's going to move it out of the way, but he actually ends up moving it straight in front of Jinx's vehicle, and so Jinx's vehicle is going to take a point of damage, and so Jinx hits him, and the, you know, the, the warning sensors, the warning alarms are going off again, beep, beep, Impact detected. Impact. Fuck off. I know it. Fuck off. And he zips through the, the, the truck, spins off sideways uh, into, uh, you know, off into the side, lands on its side. Food and everything is now covering Jinx's vehicle. Let's see. On a, the higher I roll, the worse for that, that poor driver or the, you know, the vendor. Okay, it's pretty bad for the vendor anyway, but he's okay. His his vendor truck is ruined, and but he didn't go flying in and kill anybody who was waiting around because everyone's scattered. And unfortunately, the delay allows the Razor Girl uh, cars to get closer. Oh, this excitement makes your mind mighty thirsty. Uh, anyway, so he, now he's looking, he's looking for another place to, to, to kind of pull into, um, now that the, the little indicator on the, on the display is, is talking about, uh, all train system failure, all train system failure. And the little digital uh, picture of his buggy with the four wheels, you know, they're all kind of flashing red now. Mm. Let's see. He's going to try to, it'll be hard while he's driving, but he's just going to try to, because uh, he is a rev head, he's just going to try to do a quick reboot on that. So he reaches over and he's like, doo, 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 beep, to try to reboot the ATV wheel system. And that's going to be a, that's going to be a rev head. So just, just the two. And... He is doing it while he's speeding, so I'm just going to give two two penalty dice. And rebooting it is probably not going to work because this was, you know, th this was being this was caused by some kind of physical impact. But you know, step one, power cycle. Have you power cycled your system, sir? Please confirm reboot. The vehicle is moving. Yes, yes. Fuck off. Pew. Oh, look at that. All right, so the reboot works. Uh, the it, it, it reboots for a second. The the wheels flash yellow as it's as they sync back up and then green again. So now he's uh, he's got his ATV uh, his, his vehicle tag back. He's managed to reboot the system and it's up. And th these guys are now they're they're still able to catch up with him. So he is looking for. Again, he's looking for something, you know, sewage drainage ditch, uh, maybe some kind of landfill or, or something like that in this grinder's area, maybe like a slag hill or something. Let's take a let's take a look and see what we find next in this grind in the grinders. An abandoned warehouse. That's exactly right. So he sees this warehouse. There's some kind of warning, you know. Don't come in, you know, condemned by city. Uh, of course, you know, the people have been ignoring that forever. It's, you know, there's, there's um, you know, the little signs are painted over and whatnot. Uh, but he goes busting through the doors. And they, they shatter and go. And he's, he's whipping around. And it is. It's full of, uh, basically, it's just full of these boxes and crates that have been left to rot. So he is trying to swerve through them all. He's trying to go around because he knows that they have guns and they have, you know, they have uh, passengers who can hold guns out the window and shoot at him as he's driving along. So he's trying to just stay barely out of their range and driving through piles of debris and hoping they won't follow. Or if they do follow, they'll have some kind of mechanical issue.
All right, so as he, he swerves around. He's trying to use the terrain to his advantage. Uh, I'm going to give... You know, since he's got his ATV wheels and his toughness, uh, I'm going to give him a little, give him a little, give him a little love for being able to fix his his uh, all terrain wheels, bring them back online. So I'm going to give him five dice for this, and one danger die because that they he's outnumbered, and they are you know, in fast vehicles. Excellent. So he manages to get through some of the debris, and the other cars are they're really having trouble. They can't get they can't get a good shot on him, and they are having problems uh, keeping up with him as he bursts out the other side of the warehouse. And as he as he jumps through the other side of the uh, the abandoned warehouse into some very rough terrain. Let's see. One of these guys is going to have an issue. One, two, three, it'll be the top guy. Four, five, or six, it'll be the bottom guy. All right. So that brings him down to zero. So that guy, he's uh, as Jinx jumps through the warehouse. Uh, th those doors busting, uh, busting apart, flying apart. Oh, two. The first car, he ends up skidding out on some of the debris. He flips and crashes into the, into one of the warehouse columns that's, that support the ceiling and wraps the car around it. And the second car is still still flying along, but he too is. Um, he manages to get to get by so he's he's right on he's right on jinx's ass now because he managed to follow in the through the trail of destruction he just gunned it through the trail of destruction the other guy and jinx kind of <laughs> cleared the way for him and jinx sees flashes coming from the window behind or, or from from over his shoulder he sees the flashes as one of the people is leaning out, and Jinx tries to steer to get out of the way. He's trying to evade. He's trying to do everything he can. As they come out of this warehouse, they fly into a prison. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to say he probably is not flying into a prison, but there is a uh, a labor, kind of a labor camp that they use for forced labor for the prisoners to work on, around the city. Um, or actually, we'll say, we'll say it's a chain gang kind of thing. There's the armored truck and prisoners out there working alongside some robots to clean up this this area that's just full of uh, debris and apparently somebody nearby maybe one of the, the the tenements or probably one of the big uh factories has just been dumping shit out in <laughs> over their wall and these are this this crew made up of uh andro or androids and prisoners are cleaning it up putting them in the, into a large dump truck and jinx whips around and flies right through one of their big piles of crap that they're picking up. He's he's still trying to get this car out of the way. Now, technically, he has made his third success. Um, so technically, he should get away. But I'll be honest, I'm having too much fun with the chase. So we're just gonna we're just gonna keep going until we get like a really maybe a really cool event. Um, or until Jinx gets hurt and he cries, and I don't want that to happen. But since he's driving through this uh, again, some rough terrain, I'm going to give him his four dice. And right now he's just trying to evade. He's he's trying to keep from getting all shot up. He's not trying. He's not trying to necessarily get them to wreck or anything. So. 
he's going to do that. Danger dice, one, because, well, they're, sh you know, they're shooting guns at him. One success with a four. Oh, no. Okay, so that four is canceled out. So no successes. Now, you could spend... The, the, one way to spend the stunt points is you can increase the die, but you're supposed to do that before you roll the danger dice. Hmm. I may have to work on the on the macro and maybe split um maybe split the action and danger dice into two separate things. But well for right now, uh no successes. He has the ability, one of his rev head things, the bullets sp uh, the bullets find their mark, even though he's, you know, he sent these prisoners fought, uh, flying and he's gone through the debris. The uh, Razor Girl car has kind of swerved around the debris so as not to follow him. And the guy's leaning out the window, shooting at him. And the bullets find their mark and uh, hit the, um, you know, the, the window shatter and the... Uh, you know, the, the lights, the, the warning lights start bleeping all over the place again. I'm going to give him a chance to, because he can push a machine to its edge. I'm going to give him a chance to keep the machine from completely failing. But that's just two dice. And zero, zero danger dice. One success. Okay. So I'm going to give him this this one one time. He's able to keep the uh, keep the engine going. It it something sputters and he can smell smoke somewhere, but he uses his uh, ability to he he's randomly causing things to <laughs> try to reboot things as it chugs for a second, and then he uh, he guns it and breaks it and guns it. And whatever was starting to chug catches back online. And he's, he tries to tear off again. I'm going to give him his four dice. And I'm going to give him two danger dice because he just got peppered up. And this turn, the, the car was, was chugging. The, the vehicle was chugging. Okay. All right. Very good. He manages to uh, to get get the system running again, and sc screeches around a. Oh, let's see what he sees. What does he What does he screech around here in the grinders? Oh, a giant crane. Oh. I want to say this giant crane is maybe there picking up things. He's going to try to, um, he, he's going to try to whip around and try to get the crane. He's going to try to get the other car to maybe crash into the crane or maybe get picked up by the crane. He's going to spend a stunt point to make an interest to make it, and I think that might be his last stunt point. I haven't been keeping very good track, but I think that's it. He's going to spend a stunt point to have that crane be like a mechanic crane. Or a mechanic, a magnetic crane. It's there working on some kind of cleanup project. Maybe it's it's cleaning up this area where all these all these abandoned cars, these 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 old model cars that the uh, that the local Takuro factory has been dumping off into this field. Well, now the field's full, and so some executive somewhere decided, well. It's time to get rid of those cars so we can dump our other cars there. And so this crane is using magnets to lift up the cars and drop them. Even though a lot of the material is synthetic, you know, the frame and the engine and the or the battery casing, there's enough there for it to pick up. And he's going to try, just because it's fucking cool, he's going to try to time it so that he swings, so he's following the crane, 
And as the crane's coming down to get the next car, he's going to try to knock that car out of the way and zip through, hoping that the Razor car drives under the magnet at the right time. Now, I'm sure that technically, probably the magnet, you know, the guy operating the magnet, you know, he would see and maybe not turn it on. But that's why we're trying to roll, right? Rule of cool. All right, so I'm going to give, I'm going to let him use his, his toughness uh, because he is trying to knock that car out of the way, hoping that the Razor Girl car will see that as an opportunity to, to zip, to zip closer. And of course, he's still, sh you know, trying to shoot at them, uh, but he's moving around enough and they're swerving through this area, this obviously some kind of warehouse or construction area that the, the guy in the Razor car, he's kind of having to lean out and be careful uh, about his shots. He's having a hard time getting it on there. Let's see. That is cool, but it's still kind of kind of tough. But you know what? He he used a stunt point. So I'm going to just give him one, one penalty die. And his goal here is to knock the target car out of the way, just enough to bump it out of the way, and get the Razor car in there. Phew. Okay. The, he, he knocks the car out of the way just enough, but his car, the, the, the buggy, has finally given up the ghost. He hits it and it and he spins out of control and stops and the system shuts down. Fuck! Fuck! And he grabs the he grabs the case and he opens the door and he jumps out and he's getting ready to run. But the car, the, the Razor Girl Carl comes to a stop. And they're both leaning out their windows with the with their guns out. They don't want to blow up the case. They want to keep the case so they're not, you know, just unloading right there. And this girl with like a you know with a shaved head side head and a big kind of a mohawk looking thing that sweeps over one side uh held in place by cyberpunk technology <laughs> cosmetic technology and she says hand over the case asshole we have chased you all through the fucking city you hand over that case right now and i won't rip your balls off and then there's a noise above her, and she and her partner look up, and what? And the car lifts up into the into the magnet, and uh, um, Jinx he stares, and they're they're kind of stuck. They're kind of being held to the magnet too by various cybernetic parts. They can't they can't jump out, and the crane which he notices now is automated looks like maybe and it takes the razor car and releases it into this crusher it falls into the crusher and the he can hear the screams but they can't crawl out because it's all it's it's pressing in almost immediately. They don't have enough time to, to crawl out. The doors won't open. Even though their windows were down, it crushes like this, and they just don't have enough space be, to, to get out the window. And they he hears their screams. They're screaming. Ah, no! ah, and then it turns from terror into pain, and then ah, turns into silence. Fuck me. And he gets back into the he gets back into his car. He's going to he, he's not exactly sure where he is. He's familiar with the city, but he's been driving like a bat out of hell. Let's see if he can let's see if he can get the system restarted. At least enough, you know, he looks around, there's nobody nobody chasing him, nobody getting ready to to rob him or attack him. Um one two we'll say two dice. 
uh, for his rev head, and no danger dice because the um, it is kind of a tough truck. We'll we'll see. Okay, nope, it, it's it's gone. He can't get it to come up, and he's afraid that the because he, he remembers the drone. The drone may be tied into somebody else. He doesn't see it right now. But he's, he's afraid that somebody's watching. And he grabs the gear and he runs away. <laughs> he, run, he runs away. And I think he runs away. And five minutes later, ten minutes later, as he's oh, going through the grinders, trying to hide, make sure that nobody gets him, because, of course, he's unarmed. He's unarmed, and he has something that looks valuable. It, the, the case, it, it looks like a sealed uh, cargo box, a you know, high-value kind of uh, trunk, if you will. And he's in, he's in the grinders. He just blew through and, you know, made a very public scene of himself trying to escape these things. And he... Ducks aside some somewhere to catch his breath. And he looks around. There's no one, no one in this little uh, uh, like little uh, cutout that he that he's run into. Uh, looks like maybe it's used to be some kind of parking area for one of the nearby places, but there's no one there right now. There's a couple cars. And he's thinking. Should I try to boost one of these cars? Should I try to steal one of these cars? But right at that time, a car uh, squeals in, hits the brakes, and he looks, and it's Fidget. Come on, man. Get in. Get in, you dumb motherfucker. Come on, let's go. Come on, you stupid. And so he, 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 he blinks, and he runs around, and he gets in the car, and... Uh, fidget takes off. <sighs> Jesus. Well, I'm glad you're here. Well, I'm only here because she sent me. And by the way, don't get the idea that she cares about you. She don't give a fuck about you. She only was in there. She don't give a fuck about you. And I don't think she gives a fuck about you either. Shut up. Shut up, motherfucker. Jesus, come rescue your stupid ass, and then all you want to do is back talk to me? What a dumb but oh, You know what? Just, just shut up. Just shut up. Don't talk to me. And uh, Jinx is happy to not talk to him because he's he's just, uh, even though he's a thrill junkie, he's, you know, he's reckless and fearless. He, uh, you know, he, his, he's, he's still going, and he made it back. Well, hopefully he'll, <laughs> he'll make it back. And he does. He makes it back. The fidget kind of slows down. He's got more of a normal fit-in kind of car. And he pulls into Slab's warehouse. And as Jinx steps out, the fidget's like, Hey, you let me get that to him. Fuck you. Oh. All right, edit. Fidget says, Man, you let me get that to him. Come on, let me give it to her. Let me give it to her. Man, I'll make it worth your while. I'll give it to her. Let me give it to her. Fuck you. And he pops open and he, he smirks at Fidget and shakes his head and hops out. And there he sees Slab walking towards him with a big smile on her face. And the, 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 the smile is huge, but it makes her jowls sag and push up even more against her little cybernetic... Uh, face plate and it just it just looks creepy she, she really looks like something out of one of his childhood nightmares but she says that was amazing absolutely amazing jinx but even more amazing you've got my prize and she holds out her, her hands and he hands it to her uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about the the buggy. He's like, 
Don't worry about that. We've got someone to go get that if we need to. That that was amazing. And she, come with me. And Jinx starts, Jinx starts following her. Fidget starts following them too. And she says, not you. And Fidget looks, looks dejected. And, and Jinx says, well, he, he did come save me, you know. I mean, he, he got there pretty quick. You know, maybe he could have a peek. You know, he, he was kind of in my team. Because he, he he likes to, you know, he doesn't want to burn bridges. He, he would prefer to be on good terms with Fidget, uh, even though he kind of finds his mannerisms irritating. He does live down the street. And, you know, he still does. He feels like he kind of owes Fidget one. Okay, if you insist, Jinx, come on. And so she leads him to her office. There's a couple of uh, street thugs outside the door. You know, they've got shotguns, auto shotguns guarding. She leads him inside and sits on, sit, sits behind her desk, sets the case on the desk, and doesn't offer them a seat, so they stand on the other side of the desk, and she pops open the book, or, or, or she pops open the container, and in the container, there are some other things. It looks like there's like some old hard drives, some some types of uh, some manuals. It looks like maybe there's a, a couple small paintings and some of those glass uh, etchings, you know, laser etchings, where you get the 3D thing inside. They're all various works of art from someplace. He doesn't... He, Jinx doesn't know about that shit. But she, her face lights up even more, which is even more disturbing because she has some weird, like, cyber-looking teeth. They don't look normal. Normally, you can't see them for, for her face, but she's smiling so big. And Jinx, again, keeps himself from shuddering, and she pulls out a book, and she, she rubs her face against it, and she opens it up to the front and says, There it is. Right there. Ah, oh, this is a classic. Signed by the author. Right there. First edition. And she closes it and holds it up. And it says, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. Jinx hasn't heard of it. He... He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't know about it. You should try reading this book. There's a lot of good wisdom in it, Jinx. But I can say that you've done me a good favor, Jinx. Excellent work. I'm very pleased. And she hands over a credit chip to him, and he scans it into his, his account. And his eyes open wide. It, it's a big payment. It's a big payment. He's never had a payment like that before. And you said, Thank you. You've now got your foot in to our family. Keep doing well for us. Stay out of trouble. Start treating us like your family. And you'll find yourself with many such rewards. Now, as she leans back into her chair, which looks to be cybernetically enhanced to hold her bulk, two little cyber arms, two little uh, so something kind of like the uh, things that uh, New Flamel had on his the shoulders, those mechanical uh, mechanical tentacles, come out and they hold. They hold the book for her. Marvelous. I will talk to you later. Have a good day, boys. And then she just start reading. She has this look of bliss on the parts of the face that still move around enough to have emotion. And Jinx looks at Fidget. Says, well, can you give me a ride home? She says, well, you think I got a car? That ain't my fucking car. That's her fucking car. She ain't giving me no more cars thanks to you. 
And then he walks off. <laughs> and Jinx chuckles and follows him. And they walk to their apartment together. And Jinx goes, gets into his apartment. And um, opens the fridge and says, fuck. He realizes that he already drank his last beer. No beer. But he's got an account full. He can go buy a bunch of beer. And even some real food. And he can get some fly and maybe a whore. The possibilities are endless for a street punk with wealth. All right, so that's the end of the mission. And we will work on getting the, uh, getting the rewards. Now that... Jinx has returned home and finished his mission. Now we get to do the rewards. Get to get those rewards. So once again, we go to our downtime. Experience points. Experience points represent... Okay. You're accrued by taking part in jobs. Oh, whoops, you know what? I I actually forgot to give an experience point for last time. I was only using the leverage to buy the experience points. I forgot to give uh, him one for last time for surviving the job. So I'll, I'll mark that one. So we have survived the job. He gets in. Uh, you get in and out mostly one piece. And botch. You learn from failure. If you survive the botch, one job. And he did get the botch, right? He got the the uh, the scavenger, a uh, new flamel. He, he rolled all ones, and so the scavenger, uh, that mechanical arm came in and crushed his gun and threw it off and left left him on his ass and unarmed. So we will go over to his character sheet. And we will mark one experience points from last week, our last episode. I don't remember if he actually did a botch or not, so we'll just we'll just leave that one. And he survived this job, and he got a a botch. So he learned not to fool with people with Doc Ock like implants. <laughs> Okay, so from the advancement here, you get uh, every five experience points. You can you can kind of do uh, one of these things, and that's kind of delineated on the on the character sheet. Let's see. Another change is at the GM's discretion. You can also make the following changes during downtime. Um, add a trigger to a trademark. I may, th I may think about that later if he wants to add something in there, change or swap an edge. Um, no, he pretty much used he pretty much used everything. I don't think there's a need to, to change any of that. Now we go on to leverage, and let's see how much leverage he got. Ah, just one. Just one this time. That's all right. Because even though he didn't get leverage in that sense, he you know he didn't get a lot of leverage as far as making friends or, or being able to to make much use of it. He did get paid handsomely because that was you know the job in the job description. Chase a dream. Let's see. He could improve himself in one way. He could mark that one experience point see but you know what i think what he's going to do is he's going to take some of that money and he's going to use it to start to start re to do some more research to 
start applying for the necessary permits because he knows that you, know, you can't just sneak your way onto one of these rockets, right? You, you have to actually, uh, you have to follow the, you know, the letter of the corporate law because they don't just allow anyone on there. So he's going to take some of that money and he's going to start researching what he needs to do to get that clearance. And he's going to start, he's going to start hiring some hackers to clean up his official record um, because his record isn't great. And the idea of, you know, getting up there without being some kind of bazillionaire and having a, a, a bad record, you know, probably not good. So he's going to use that leverage to click one more drive. Let's see, and we'll go ahead and refresh his stunt points. All right. So once he's got once he's got that taken care of, let's see. I think because the the role was a you know paid handsomely. There's a particularly profitable option for plus one per player, and I think I think for now, just because he wants to keep his uh, keep his options open for the uh, you know getting to orbit he's just going to put one into stash and what that does is he can use it to increase uh, his chance of getting special gear on a mission or he can he can use it for, for something like that I am going to, because he did get paid also, I'm going to allow him to update his threads. He tries to dress to impress. Looks like, or dresses like, now wears. Fashionable corporate casual no not corporate casual uh, fashionable corporate dress clothes so kind of stylized not not stuffy stuff but kind of stylized you know he's got the, the he's got the jacket and the tie loosened up a little bit so he looks kind of like a uh, a, a chilled out corporate goon kind of. And not, I'm going to give him, he has now bought his own machine pistol. Auto fire. And I'll say he's got himself some body armor. And that will just allow him to use it to maybe reroll for hits or something like that. All right, and while he's doing his downtime, waiting for his next mission, he is trying to make you know, kind of get back into uh, Fidget's good graces. Yeah, he's not going to be too worried about it. Fidget's a small time punk. He's dealing with Slab, who he kind of realizes is herself probably small time uh, compared to you know the rest of the chain leading up to the father. And as he's sitting there pondering, he's trying to he's trying to remember if he left that dead body on the front of his his uh, uh, ATV when he came through the city and it broke down. Now he can't remember. He ran out. He he ran away so fast he doesn't even remember. It probably flew off somewhere in the middle of town. <laughs> he he doesn't know. But as he ends. The 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 session, he he chuckles about the fate of that that dead scavenger who was stuck, f swaying back and forth on the front of his vehicle in the storm. 
he takes a uh, he takes a hit from an e bud that's got a a fly uh, canister in it, <sighs> and he lets the he lets the hallucinogenic effect kind of relax him a bit. Well, not really hallucinogenic, but uh, re relaxation. As he watches another rocket a couple of weeks later fly up through the bright laser lights. And he says, yep, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there soon. And we'll call it there. I had a great time. I uh, hope you're enjoying the game as much as I am. Thanks for watching. And uh, happy gaming.